I have a background in sales, okay? And what, that has given me, by default, it was never the intention, okay? What that's given me over the years is an ability to knock on someone's door completely, totally and utterly out of the blue, strike up a conversation with them, get talking to them and potentially do a bit of business with them. Now, immediately, on the spot there and then, or, you know, the next day or six months time or in 10 years time. Okay, why am I telling you about this? I'm telling you about this because I'm currently pulled over on the side of the road having just had a conversation with somebody that I never knew existed up until Jesus, I was going to say about 20 minutes ago, but I'm stood there talking to the man for the last two hours. So, where does it start? It starts with past guest and friend of the show, Dave Webster, owner of the best cycling shop in County Mead. Hi Dave. Dave sent me a picture this morning of uh, one of these kind of trailers trailer coffee shop things you know these things you can just pull along in a trailer and it's a, a coffee shop okay and it was parked outside the nct center in kells okay so the nct center in kells is an industrial estate just out the, outside of the town and like all nct centers they're not smart enough to fucking realize you could pop up a coffee shop because everybody that comes into you has half an hour to kill and they've got nothing to do because it's an industrial estate that has nothing to do in it so you'd think they'd have the fucking foresight to set up a coffee shop they don't but this cute who are basically set one up across the road from them and dave went over and got himself a coffee took a picture of it sent it to me knew i'd kind of get it sent it with the caption you know look this cute cunt is up to and to cut a long story short, I happened to be in that industrial estate on the same day and went in, got a coffee. I've stopped buying coffee in places, but I gave that cunt 250 for a cup of coffee because he deserves it. But anyway, I was dumping stuff, unfortunately, that I was left with when the lockdown came into place. Now, that was six weeks ago. I should have gotten rid of it a long time ago, but I didn't because I didn't have the heart to dump it. And I just put it in the back of my mind and kind of forgot about it. But anyway dumped all the stuff and I was leaving and I spy on this sign I can't even remember what it said something along the lines of Irish snails limited okay now I have an interest in snail farming because as you may remember I run a vertical farm okay now what I grow is microgreens technically I'm a microgreen grower that's what I do for a living but I've long maintained before I ever even knew what a microgreen was the, the business idea has always been, from, from its inception, the business has been a controlled environment business. Doesn't necessarily have to grow anything, I could, I could, or it doesn't necessarily have to grow plants. I could grow mushrooms, I could, go, I could grow mold, okay? I could grow anything, or I could maintain anything. The idea is whatever thrives in a controlled environment, which is most things, by the way, and that controlled environment could be, you know, freezing cold or scorching hot or somewhere in between. But the idea is you play God, essentially. You control the environment. And by control the environment, I mean the heat. I mean the humidity. I mean the watering, the moisture in the substrate, the moisture in the air, the wind, the air circulation, everything and anything that is conceivably under control, literally literally down to the composition of the air in the room and the pressure of that air in the room. All of that, I'm, I love all that shit. It's fucking fascinating. I've always loved it. I've been a lover of it for a long time and I'm glad to, repeat, to report that I do it professionally now. Anyway, there's a girl called Eva Milka, uh, a Polish chick originally, I think she's living in Ireland a long time, and she has a snail farm down in, uh, Carlo, I believe. There's another guy, Stephen Summon in Galway, who has a similar setup. But basically, what they own and operate are relatively small snail farms, an acre or two, something like that. And what they do is they grow snails and they sell them to people who buy snails. Look, I don't know. I think they go to the Paris market or something because, believe it or not, the French eat more snails than the Irish. I think Eva Milka's company is quite cleverly called Gaelic Escargo. Um, I guess scargo is the French word for snails and Gaelic is obviously Irish, so Irish snails, Gaelic or scargo. Anyway, I would have looked up Eva Milka's uh, YouTube channel or um, I think her YouTube channel is called Gaelic Escargo, so maybe look it up. But if you do look it up, you'll see it's a bit, what's the term, back gardeny. Okay, that's not a, that's not a compliment. 
Now, look, I don't mean to shit on what she does. I say fair play to her. She's making a living off growing snails, which is fucking absolutely class in my book. But anyway, I digress. I've long had an interest in snail farming because I would have looked at what she did and saw it as a little bit backward, a little bit overly labor intensive. And I thought that like she, she would bring stuff in during the winter. And that to me is just, I don't know, there's something about that I don't like. You're not set up right if you're having to, to bring stuff in out of the cold. Why not have these snails in a perfect environment 24 7 365 so you can see where the crossover there is between growing microgreens in a controlled environment and growing snails in a controlled environment so i've had long had an interest in snail farming i thought that i could kind of modernize snail farming not modernize what your one even milka does but just basically modernize snail farming generally so when i saw this sign in an industrial estate irish snails limited i went fuck what the fuck is that pulled up found where I thought it might be there was this huge big building no real signage or anything no reception no nothing it was all a bit weird knocked on the door some lady came down I was like sorry I saw a sign um Irish snail farming is, is that yourself or who is it and she's like no no that, that's the other dude I'll get him for you now to cut a long story short down walks this man shout out to Edmund Cahill what a fucking legend of a man okay I've been, I'm shivering here because I've been there standing in the freezing fucking cold talking to him for the last two hours. Because of Corona, you can't just be invited in and all that. It's, 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 it, it, it makes that whole doorstepping, that whole sales thing a bit tricky. But anyway, get chatting to fucking Edmund, okay? Now, I'm paraphrasing this, and partly the reason I'm recording this in the first place is just so it doesn't go out in my head. The man, the man did what that ferret man from a couple of episodes, um, or sorry, from the previous season now at this stage, did to me, and just bombarded me with information. So I said, fuck, and I took out the phone, literally just as I pulled up down the road from him, and I said, I better get this down, just because I'll forget half of the things he said to me. So first off, he was familiar with your one Eva Milka, um, but but respectively said, that's kind of small scale, okay? I think he said her farms, are, or her farm is like half an acre or maybe an acre or two. The smallest person that he'll deal with, he's not growing snails himself. The smallest f farm or if you want to, if you want to get into bed with this fella and grow snails, I think the minimum is six acres. Okay, and even at that, it's like, oh God, really? You just have the six acres? He has a whole big system. I can't think of the name of it, but he has not the franchise, but I think he has the distribution rights for the thirty-two counties of Ireland for this organisation that's in the north of Italy. They have this system of growing snails. It's all outdoors. It's all in the field. There's nothing artificial about it and he has this system it's a patented system you set aside six a minimum of six acres of land he basically guides you on what to do and he buys everything from you okay so he buys every snail that you produce he buys it and he pays it for you the day it gets delivered so you deliver it they sort through it to make sure they're not half dead or that they're the way that they're supposed to be and he pays you bang there and then for them okay and he has the agency for the 32 counties of Ireland. Started talking about this relationship between Sna between him and the people in Northern Italy. And it was, oh, it was just a amazing. I won't go into the details of it here because you won't follow me and I won't follow myself. And it'll be just too confusing. But anyway, on top of having this whole snail farming empire thing that he's building here in Ireland. He's only in the middle of building a big giant distillery. He's had two men working full time since June of last year. So a year and a half practically two men full time putting together a full scale distillery. He's going to grow or not grow. He's going to make vodka madness. He has gotten the name for I think it was the biggest producer of vodka in Russia ever. A huge big family the equivalent the the Russian vodka equivalent of the Guinness family okay apparently they're all dead apart from this one woman who has the right the rights to the branding basically of hundreds of years of vodka production in Russia apparently he named the brand it didn't mean anything to me 
I'm not a big vodka head, but apparently he now has this brand and he's building a distillery on the back of this brand. He's already got a distribution agreement made with some huge big alcohol distributor in Canada. Madness. He I mentioned to him, he, oh, sorry, he mentioned, what was it? He mentioned the pharmaceutical end of growing snails because apparently before they get processed as food, they have to be de-slimed. How that happens, I don't know, but the slime that they take off the snails has a value. It has pharmaceutical qualities. I think it's used in cosmetics as well as pharmaceuticals. But he starts telling me about how he got in bed with all these pharmaceutical companies and these cosmetic companies and started. I started talking then about how there was crossover there between what I did, because if I was to grow the, the right plant, cannabis for example that would be for pharmaceutical use and cosmetic use as well as food service and, and all the rest of it and recreational use so we were chatting about the cross over there and it was like oh it's funny you say that because you know the way x amount of states have legalized cannabis and i was like yeah 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 and he goes they've they had a massive problem with payments because pay or not you call it, not paypal fucking well maybe paypal but mastercard and visa those companies i don't think they could legally supply the card machines to these dispensaries because although the dispensaries are legal in the state they're not legal federally they're not legal nationally so all these uh, dis are not distilleries all these cannabis dispensaries that have popped up all over the place in the states have to deal in cash because they can't use these big visa companies and whatever else because they're not federally legit and mastercard don't want to fucking run afoul of the US government for obvious reasons but what he started talking about was how he's an accountant by trade and how through his contacts in northern Italy in the pharmaceutical industry and the cosmetic industry he got ended up getting into bed with software developers who were making payment processing things <laughs> not my area of expertise lads making payment processing things so that the dispensaries the cannabis dispensaries in the states could process their payments and didn't have to deal it in cash because dealing in cash what that means is if you take in hundreds of thousands or even just tens of thousands that means that money has to be stored that means it has to have an armed guard there's insurance implications there's just general security implications you don't have money going through your bank so you can't get a mortgage it's a mess you're, you're paying staff in cash you're paying your bills in cash it's just it's just a disaster and he got into bed with these guys who were designing software and designing machines and all the rest of it to process these fucking payments madness what the fuck else was the man talking about there was the snails, there was his distillery, there was the payments. Oh God, the, the man just fucking blew me away. And as I said, I'm here at the side of the road fucking rambling. I'm 13 minutes in now. But anyway, what's the point? The point is, for the 15 odd years that I was picking up the phone and ringing people, and for the 15 odd years that I was knocking on people's doors and uh, trying to get to know people and trying to make contacts and all the rest of it, little did I know that that would give me the ability to do what I just did there, which was doorstep a fucking multi-millionaire and have the man chatting for two hours. And God knows what could come from our conversation just there. Maybe nothing. He gave me half a dozen different websites that he owns because he, he obviously knew I had an interest in what he was doing and he seemed to have an interest in me having an interest, if that makes sense. He was all interested about what I do and how I get into it. And I don't know, kindred spirits springs to mind. Nothing better than that. Um, comes to mind offhand but what I'm, what I get what I'm getting at is I was practicing all those years that I was doing that I was busy practicing and when no matter what you practice you'll get better at it if you practice laying lying in bed late or on the weekends you'll get better at it if you practice stuffing your face full of chocolate in the evening you'll get better at it if you practice being sound to your kids, being nicer to your partner, just being more charitable to yourself and others around you, you'll get better at it. No matter what you do, if you do it often and if you do it repeatedly and if you build it into your day, you'll get better at it. And that's what the podcast has been for me. That's what the second season has been. It's practice. Doing it every day, it means that I'm getting better. I'm 14 and a half minutes into this. I haven't pressed pause once. This will be 15 minutes of non-stop 
uninterrupted monologuing of a relatively high quality. I mean, I'm not going to fucking get an award for it. It's not a masterpiece, but fuck me, it's better than season one. That's for damn sure. And on that note, I'll chat to you soon. <laughs>